this is my video presentation on the Muang language, or Thiang Muang, as it's the name of it in Muang itself. So the key idea that I'm going to be going back to and referring to in this presentation is from this quote from Fan, that the status of Muang as a language has not been well understood. Um, and this applies to the relationship of Muang within Viet Muang, uh, between Muang and Vietnamese, but it also uh, can be applied to the relationship between Viet Muang and Vietic languages, Mon Khmer and Vietic languages, and the place of Mon Khmer within Austronesian languages. And these are all things that I'll be looking at in this presentation. So Muang is a Vietic language. It has more than 1 million speakers. Uh, had 914,000 speakers at the turn of the century, so we can estimate that it's approximately gone up to 1 million. The locations where Muang is spoken are Hoa Bin, Sang Hoa, Vien Phu, Yang Bai, and Son La, and Ninh Bin. And these are all regions in the north of Vietnam. Uh, they're hilly highland regions. And I'll show a map later on, but just before the map, I think it would make sense to talk through the languages of Vietnam. So there are the Austronesian languages, there are the Mon Khmer languages, and uh, Vietic languages. The main Vietic language is Vietnamese, and uh, Vietnamese itself accounts for two-thirds of Austronesian speakers as a whole, and is, of course, the predominant uh, language in Vietnam. We also have Muang, which is the focus and study of this video. We have other Vietic languages like Tho, uh, and on the within the Mon Khmer grouping, we have Khmer itself. Uh, and there's also Malayo-Polynesian languages like Cham, and there are other languages like Chinese, French, and Russian. And these are here for a variety of historical colonial reasons. So here's a map of uh, the presence of these languages. So the darkest region here, the bits that are shaded, the most are where Muang is spoken, predominantly in the north there, but we can see a small portion of it uh, closer to the center of Vietnam, south of the Gulf of Tonkin, in the northwest, we have where Tho is spoken, and the lighter regions are where Vietnamese is spoken. So now turning to proto Vietnam, this is a diagram from the fan paper, and this is given at the start of the paper and shows modern Vietnamese branching off from proto Vietnam earlier than the modern Muong dialects. And it's just important to note here that Fan refers to Muong dialects because in this paper he argues that Muong is a collection of dialects, hence the different lines, as opposed to being one uh, homogenous language. So the first idea for a proto Muang was referred to as pre and uh, this came from Henry Maspero in 1912, and he used the comparative method on several dialects of both languages, of both Vietnamese and Muang, and he found a significant number of Chinese loanwords. So Thompson in 1976 expanded this and said that Preanamite was not only Austroasiatic, but a part of the Mon Khmer subgroup. And this idea um, went through a bit of debate, but it's fairly accepted now that it is in fact part of the Mon Khmer subgroup. So for the reconstruction, Northern Vietnamese was used uh, because it is geographically close to the Hmong people. So for historical reasons, it makes sense. So here's the phonology of proto viet Hmong. Nothing stands out instantly, but two things to note are the presence of three aspirated voiceless plosives, p, t, k, and the presence of b and g. It's just to note those for later. So here is the diagram that Fan finishes his paper on, where he shows proto viet and Anamini's Middle Chinese combining to form hybridized proto viet language, um, and then as we saw, Vietnamese branched off from this, and the modern Muang dialects continued from there. So this is um, building on the idea that Maspero established in his 1912 paper. So now turning to the phonology of Muang itself, uh, I'll be mainly referring to the Barker 68 paper here. The Barkers were uh, a husband and wife who a lot of the early work of Muang was done by. So there's a monosyllabic uh, structure here. It has this CBC structure where neither of the consonants is necessary or mandatory, but the vowel, the nucleus of it is. The inventory for the first consonant 
It includes all consonants, it's not limited by any restrictions. The vowel is a single vowel. When I say single vowel, I just mean one vowel, but this vowel could be a uh, one of the nine vowels which I'll show later. It could be a diphthong or it could be a short vowel. And it will and could contain one of these five tones. Um, and the five tones I'll talk about later. I put an asterisk here because there was some debate as to whether it's five or six, but the Barker's paper refers to there as being as five. And the inventory for the second consonant is more restricted. Um, voiceless and aspirated stops can occur here. Nasals can occur here. Glads can occur here. And lateral. So now here is the consonant chart given in the Barker paper. Um, nothing stands out here instantly, but I'll compare it to proto Vietnamese and Vietnamese in turn, and I'll talk through some of the differences there. So here is the phonology chart of proto Vietnamese transposed, uh, so it's easier to compare to the Muang chart. So the first thing that stands out to me is the presence of, or pre presence of uh, aspirated plosives in proto Muang and its absence in Muang. But the plosives themselves are here. So we do have put and co, but not their aspirated counterparts. We have the uh, voiceless feeler fricative ch present in Muang, but this is not present in proto Muang. And another sound that is not present in proto Muang but is present in Muang is qua. Uh, qua is the labialized velar plosive, voiceless velar plosive. So now turning on to Vietnamese, and uh, again, nothing stands out here instantly, but as you've probably noticed, I've been referring to b and g a lot. b and g, neither of them is present in Vietnamese. So this is interesting because the uh, voiceless equivalents p and k are present to Vietnamese. And the other difference that stands out is the presence of V in Vietnamese and its absence in Muang. But on some level, this seems quite obvious given the name of the language itself. So now turning on to the Kim Thong dialect here in the Nine paper. Here we do see the presence of the aspirated plosives. And we do also see the presence of the implosives that were not present in Muang. And this leads to one of two hypotheses. Either the Berkers paper decided not to include the aspirated sounds separately and to group them in together with their unaspirated counterparts. And it may have done the same with the implosives and grouped them in with plosives. Or it could be that because the study was done in 2021, there was more of an influence from Vietnamese on Kim Thong. Alternatively, this influence from Vietnamese could have been there in the Kim Thong dialect and it was not recorded by the Barakers in the 68 paper. So this is um, fairly unclear, but I suppose it just shows that the, the methodologies that are used can influence the overall scheme of the paper. So turning now on from the consonants to the vowels, I'll also be referring to Barker's 68 paper, although it isn't as detailed as the paper on Kim Thong, it is the only uh, source to look at Muang as a whole language, although as Fan pointed out, whether Muang is a language or a collection of dialects is unclear. So this is the table that is in the book. I have decided to um, present it in a nicer, clearer format here, so you can see um, the paper refers to glided vowels, which are just simply diphthongs. So we have our front, central, back. Um, these are the majority of the vowels. Close, mid, over, mid, and open vowels. Um, so the nine normal vowels, I guess. We have three diphthongs. Ye, y, and w. Um, so this is just the inventory of the vowels in more. And there are also the two short vowels, a and ha. So now turning on to tones, and I'll be referring to Tiberd's 1838 paper. So they correspond to Vietnamese tones. Um, Vietnamese has six tones, Muang has five. And as we can see here, 
there are given in terms of musical notation here, just for the sake of uh, analogy, I believe. But I find it easier to just talk through some examples, so I'll do that now. So Barker has the six tones of Vietnamese. Um, Moong removes one of them. So there's the middle level Ma, ghost, low rising constricted, Na, he meaning he sure it, high rising with a final stop, and Ok, evil, high rising without final stop, Ka, low falling, Che, and the high mid level, uh, Lich. So the difference between Vietnamese and Muong is the absence of this last tone. So I'm now going to turn to some sound changes that are present. So we have an aspirated P, P becoming F. Uh, so in Pan becomes Fan, and this means a wooden bed. There is the aspirated velar plosive, voiceless velar plosive becoming a uh, fricative, again similar as the previous example. In the proto Moang Kue becomes Hui, um, this means honeybee. And then the last example I've given is simply uh, voicing of put B, and Bo becomes Po, and this means cow, and it is the same word in Irish. So I'm now briefly going to look at the syntax and morphology of Moong, and I say briefly because there is really not much to be looked at. The syntax of Muong is uh, SVO. This is the same as the structure in Vietnamese, and it is also true for all Vietic languages. So from this, we can probably infer that proto viet Muong also had an SVO structure. So from the historical linguistics perspective, there's really not much to be said here or to be added in. The morphology of uh, Muong is, again, quite simple, like I was explaining earlier in the philology section. It is monosyllabic, meaning that each lexical item only has the one syllable. That syllable must contain the nucleus of the vowel, and can contain a consonant to either side, but doesn't have to contain a consonant to either side. Um, and there's no inflectional morphology here, so from a historical perspective, there's not much to be added. I'm going to finish off the video by talking through the Vietic languages. Um, they're placed within Austronesian, and just finishing up on the general ideas here, and on the, on the broad scale. So Austroasiatic is a language family that contains roughly 170 languages. Uh, this is according to Hakim Bashir. There are three subgroups in South Asia. Uh, there's Imunda, there's Khasik, and there's Nicobaris. And the Munda languages are regarded as being in the Indosphere. So these are languages that are more closely culturally connected to the Indian subcontinent, while the other language groups, including Mual, are regarded as being in the Sinosphere. And this was present when we were looking at proto viet Mual. Fan concluded his paper by saying that Annamese Middle Chinese played a role in hybridized proto viet Mual, which then gave way to the Mual that we're studying here, and also the Vietnamese that we've been comparing it to. So here is a tree of the Vietic languages. Um, at the top, we can see the primary, the key branch, I guess, Vietnamese, Muang, Nuang. Uh, again, the key branch because Vietnamese is just so widely spoken compared to these other languages. On the second branch there, we can see Tho, which was mentioned briefly at the start. Uh, and then there are other branches. The final branch, the Krima Lang branch, has the most number of languages, but the size uh, of the the populations of the speakers of these languages compared to the first is uh, significantly smaller. And most of these languages, like Muang, are endangered languages. So now turning onto the um, idea here that they are an indeterminate number of languages spoken primarily in Vietnam and adjacent parts of Laos. So the reason it's indeterminate for is for a variety of reasons. So again, in some cases, uh, it could be like Muang, where whether it's a language or whether it is simply a subgroup of languages is unclear. Um, some of these languages may be extinct. 
and it's difficult to catalog these but a lot of work has been done recently um, a lot of these papers were done roughly in the last 10 years so there is a bit of movement in the field so i mentioned at the start this question of whether it was monk or not um, and this stretches back to Maspero's paper in 1912 and essentially by this point now and by the point of uh, Fan's paper, it's fairly well established that Muang and Viet Muang languages are part of the Hmong Khmer subgroup within Austronesian. Um, and this is one of the ideas that before had been that it was a sister to Hmong Khmer, uh, not a daughter. This idea has been uh, proven wrong in many ways. So now turning finally to the zodiac names in Vietic languages. And I think this is a nice table that illustrates some of the changes. So we can see the differences between um, Vietnamese and Muong, but also between proto viet Muong and Vietnamese and Muong. So for example, let's take the word for rat. We can see the um, devoicing that has occurred. With buffalo, we can see that for Vietnamese, the k sound became alveolar, whereas in Muang, it became velar. So some slight differences there. And we also have Khmer, which is the other language that I mentioned at the start that is present in Vietnam. Here, there are some similarities, uh, especially between proto viet Muang and Old Khmer, but between the phonology of Khmer and Vietnamese and Muang, there's less obvious um, points there. So uh, just a final one to touch on here is between Vietnamese and Muang, the word for year is both Nam, but in Vietnamese, the tone is different. It's the Na. So to conclude, I just want to point out the idea that many Vietic languages are undergoing rapid assimilation to Vietnamese. Um, this means that when we're looking at cases of Muang, like the Kim Thong, we need to bear in mind that there are two hypotheses why there are some sounds present. It could be that because these studies were done later, these sounds have been inherited from Vietnamese, or it could be that these are more detailed studies. Um, and also because Muang and Vietnamese are so closely related, it's quite possible that this assimilation is taking place a lot quicker. Also with the rise of technology, the use of internet, it's quite likely that Muang will be completely assimilated. I just want to finish off with the quote from a famous Hebrew scholar that a language is simply a dialect with an army and a navy. And whether we like it or not, Muang is spoken in very rural, rural areas that aren't as central to Vietnam. And so this is probably also going to add to the gradual assimilation. So this is my bibliography. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something about Muang in this video. Thank you very much.